episode of Impacting Life 24-7. And let me make sure to look at the right camera tonight. This is your host, C.L. King, coming to you live from the High Definition Studios here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Did you guys know that I say all this stuff without a single script? <laughs> it's a, a one drive. I've been saying it now since 2019. So I guess I figured out who I am and what show this is. I am so delighted because for me, some of you guys have a long work week, but for me, my work week ends on Thursday. Impact Life 24 7 is on Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. And so after this is why we do dress down. You know, you guys do dress down Fridays in your office. I told my guest tonight it's dress down Thursday. Okay, so no suit and tie tonight. I got my Impact in Life 24 7 hat on, which I'm hoping you guys will buy soon. And I'm like, hey man, this is it. It's snowing in Texas. What else could you ask for? <laughs> yeah, I know. Those people out in Texas said that it's gonna get down to 30 degrees and they're they're like buying the bread off the shelves. And so Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that, that I uh, am blessed with, and I say this every single time, it's not often that, that you get to step into a profession where you do what you love. I, I don't have a lot of skills. I know that. I don't, I don't change tires. I don't do backflips. I can't handle swords. I can't, you know, beat up people. All I, all I am is this one one thing and i'm a speaker and god gave me this one talent and i'm blessed to be able because of that medium i'm blessed to be able to bring other people into this arena and this architecture who are doing great things doing phenomenal things and i i i must say that we've only had a handful of folks in the history of impacting life 24 7 come on the show twice I, I, i'm just going to be honest with you because number one there's thousands of people that are reaching out to us every year asking to be on the show so we want to get as much goodness out there to the airwaves as you as we can but then the second reason is um why we don't have people often back to back is because it was a one-time event and we appreciated what they said and that was it. It wasn't recyclable, it wasn't reusable, it wasn't renewable. But then every now and then, ladies and gentlemen, every now and then, you are blessed with someone who brings so much kinetic, uh, stratospheric energy to your operation that you're saying, listen, I don't just want you back once or twice. I want you back as often as you can come back. And uh, that's who I have in my virtual studios tonight. I have someone who was with us on our last show of the year in 2020. Y'all remember her? The Ninja. I got a lot of uh, young people liking it on, on Instagram. The Feminine Ninja, the author of Forever Fit and Flexible, Feeling Fabulous at 50 and Beyond, my friend, my sister, my little sister, Mrs. Cheryl I Love. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much, CL. Thank you for having me on the show again. I really appreciate it. And thank you for calling me your little sister. That just tickles me because I know I'm quite a bit older than you. Um, so yeah, it just makes me happy. It makes me smile every time I hear it. Well, you know, the cool thing about it is, Cheryl, as you know, and, and us bantering back and forth 30 days, I mean, 30 minutes backstage, is that <clears throat> I you, I may be taller than you and maybe even a little heavier than you, but you can still handle your business. You ain't worried about none of that stuff. Those, those are elements. I like what Mike Tyson said, though, because you brought up age. Mike Tyson said this in recent years, the, the like the refined Mike Tyson now, not the other guy. He said that we don't go up to people and say, hey, look, um, my name is Chris and I'm 50. Or my name is Bob and I'm 72. Our age doesn't define us. And I said, you know what? I'm feeling that. I'm Chris. I just had a birthday. In fact, if I could reach my balloons, which are hanging all in the studio here, I'd pull them down and show y'all. I'm just 46. And so, you know, some people I see at 46, they're ready to just cash in the chips. Mm -hmm. And 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 one day, Cheryl, I won't do it to you on this show because we didn't rehearse. 
but I'm going to let you tell my audience, which is from coast to coast, truly how old you are. And they're going to be blown away. They're not going to believe it. So <laughs> they're not going to believe I it. I don't mind. I don't mind telling. <laughs> no, no. Listen, maybe at the end of the show, let's just keep them in suspense. Okay. We'll keep In fact, okay. in fact well, here's what we'll good. do. Here's what we'll do for you folks out there in Impact Life 24-7. I want you guys to guess and, and put it in the chat box for me. Mm. How old do you think my guest, Cheryl I Love is? And uh, I want you to I want you to guess, because I before I ha had her on the show the first time, I assumed that she was. So and let me just tell you, I was way, way off. So, Cheryl, listen, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you and I just we connected uh, through through a, a means that, I, you know, I think it's a lifetime connection now. And uh, so we're, we're just so happy for you to be on the show. And if you know what we do up front, we want people to connect with you. And uh, for those of you that did not connect with her at the end of the year uh, in 2020, because y'all was so busy stuffing your face with chicken and turkey and all that, <laughs> we got you now. Okay, I don't want to hear no more excuses. Cheryl, tell everybody how Greg says 32. Yeah, he's trying to get browning points. Uh, tell everybody... He's uh -huh. Greg is my new best friend. Yeah, no, no I'm jealous. You can't have it. <laughs> so anyway, Cheryl, tell everybody how they can contact you and how they can get up with you. Well, you can find me on my website is um, CherylILove.com. I also have another website, TheFeminineJaProject.com. I'm on social media, Facebook, just looking up Cheryl I Love. If you can't find me, you're not looking. And remember that it's I Love, I-L-O-V, no E at the end of my name. Yeah, I remember when I was making her flyer the first time uh, or I was reviewing her flyer. I don't I don't remember if I made it or, or our team made it, but I was like, man, it just just does not seem right without the E. Uh, and uh, I actually had somebody after you who had a, a similar ending name that didn't have an E and I put it on there because I just wanted to have an E on your name so bad and I, <laughs> I didn't have it. So Cheryl, where, where do you hail from? Where, where are you at in the world? Well, I am in Denver. I've been here for, oh my gosh, I think it's 43 years now. Yeah. I moved out here in night. Oh, I should no, don't tell, that. don't tell, don't tell Lord of mercy. I was a baby. <laughs> my parents just wrapped me up and moved the whole family out here. Yeah, so there so well Denver, yeah, Denver is the only home I've ever known. <laughs> Well, we're, we're very, very thankful for you and the work that you do. Um, and what I like to do is before we get into uh, kind of like the meat and potatoes, because I've got her book right here in my hands, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want a copy of the Forever Fit and Flexible, I want you to go to CherylILove.com and get your copy. And uh, if you reach out to her on social media, I'm sure she could send you one a signed copy because guess what? Your boy CL King. I, I mean, when I when I get when I deal with celebrities, I mean I got a signed copy, y'all. I can't even show you there. Look at that. I got a signed copy from the notorious Cheryl I Love. I want you to go to CherylILove.com and uh, forever fit and flexible, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. For those of you that may be 50 out there, so um, one of the, one of the things that that you know has has really captured me to you, Cheryl, is your messaging, your positivity, and, and all of that. Um, but, but, but beyond that is that you've got this whole other movement. You've got uh, a, a podcast yourself. You have people on your show all the time. So tell us about your Femininja project and kind of how that's evolving. So my Femininja project, it's, um, I've been podcasting been about a year and a half, I think, boy, it seems longer. And the whole basis of the show is it's about overcoming obstacles. It's about personal empowerment, restoring human dignity, uh, finding your voice, standing your ground, alternative health, lifelong learning, living well and looking good. And I always like to say just, you know, cause I'm a little snarky because living well and looking good is the best revenge. And if people don't understand that, you can contact me and I'll explain it to you. But I think a lot of people do understand that. But the whole premise is based on my experience as a martial artist. And I truly am a martial artist. 17 years experience of studying and practicing Nimpo Tai Jitsu, the art of the ninja. So a lot of the principles and the people that I talk to in the podcast I have on the show 
is basically just highlighting some of the principles and the characteristics of my martial art and the art of the ninja, just finding your way, standing your ground, finding your voice, tapping into that inner strength and power that each and every one of us have that we don't even realize sometimes because as you know, and I'm sure the audience knows, life does have a tendency to knock us down. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's basically the whole premise of the show. It is also uh, a new book that I am working on. And the title of that book is going to be, well, it is The Reluctant Ninja, ah. How a Middle-Aged Princess Became a Warrior Queen. Yeah, and see, those of you passing by, hello, Scotty, uh, Scott Oakley, man, great to see you. Uh, people come from come all over the country tuning in uh, and they, they dip in and they dip out until they find out, oh, it's Cheryl. We're staying for a while. Um, and, and the Feminine Ninja Project, I was a I was blessed to be a guest on that on that show. I felt so inadequate. Um, I, Cheryl brings so much more value, like I told her to our show than I could ever bring to hers. And the Feminine Ninja Project, one of the things I love about it is she said, hey, listen, you can feel good and you can look good, too. That That's not a problem, right? Well, I would like to argue with you just a little bit because you have brought so much value to my show and I am going to have you on again. And I did get a lot of downloads, a lot of comments and a lot of people who connected with you because of that episode where I had you on the show. And it was very wonderful. It was so heartfelt. It was just it, it was a lovely, lovely episode. So you told your story with so much um, humility and and candor and i mean it was just wonderful and so inspiring especially when you got a little evangelical on us that's great <laughs> yeah. that's <was> great <laughs> well you know here here's where we are because we're both content creators okay and now that everybody has all the cobwebs dusted off and you know whatever whoever you voted for whether they are here's what happened either they're in office or they're not <laughs> right so right. There's nothing that we can do about that. We cannot reclaim yesterday. And so here we are back together. You and I, when we got together in December, it was, it was December 20th, as, as I recall. And I mean, we were, there was still so much uncertainty. Well, now that we're back together in, in a show, a, a follow-up show, what I want to try to do is give people some, some, a roadmap. And I find that, you know, oftentimes one of the greatest roadmaps is, is, is not far from you. And, and I'm blessed because I got probably one of the greatest roadmaps that's been put together uh, this year and, and or given to me this year. And that is the Forever Fit and Flexible book that you wrote. And um, let me ask you before we get into some of the details, what was 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 your ninja background or uh, an inspiration to this? or your ballet background, or was it a combination? Uh, what, what generated this book? Well, the book is based on the principles of martial arts, dance, something called Feldenkrais, and Pilates. And it all came together because it's a result of my 20 years experience as a physical therapist and my personal experience of being a chronic pain patient when I was in my mid thirties and told that I was never gonna be able to recover. I would never have the life that I wanted or the life that I had before. And that just, you know, kind of like sit down, shut up, take your medications, do these stupid exercises and stretches and we'll take care of you for the rest of your life. That's and right. that just didn't resonate with me for some reason. It wasn't until one of my doctors told me that I would never do um, be able to do my laundry and my grocery shopping all in the same day because the arthritis in my spine was so severe that I would end up being bedridden. And I looked at her and I said, you don't understand. I'm planning on going back to ballet class. And she laughed in my face and said, you don't understand. This is your new normal. You are a chronic pain patient. You will never recover. You will never have the life that you wanted. And forget about going to physical therapy school because she knew that was one of my goals. She said, even if you could do it, you're just too darn old. And I was 36. Wow. Quit giving out all your age benchmarks because then because Greg already said that you were 30 something. So we got to get this right. He said you were 32. So <laughs> a few days older than 32 now, Greg. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, well, here's the deal. I think this is, and I'm glad you brought this back up because as you know, I hear so many stories, but, mm. but the ones that, that truly inspire me, I remember it just takes a little bit. I was a, remember I was a chronic pain. I do remember. And mm-hmm. I was on narcotics for seven straight years. Mm. That's why I can't remember hardly anything because of the brain fog. And so I, I had a guy on my show the other night. I think you might've seen him. Uh, oh my God, Scott Manda. And he, and he talked about uh, the, the medical situation that him and his wife had went through. Uh, they, they basically were at their wits end and the doctor said, you know, there's nothing else that we can do for you. It's all in your mind. Mm. When, 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 when you receive these types of diagnoses from medical professionals in the white lab coats with their names on them, I mean, are, are, why do people, you know, it's like people feel pressure and resigned to just agree with that. And that's it. Do, do you find that to be the case? Well, absolutely, because they are the experts and right. they should know everything and, you know, know what's going on in your body. But the truth is you are your own expert. You are the best expert that you can have. But we kind of lose touch with our bodies and we we either, you know, ignore some of the sensations that we're feeling in our bodies or we have a tendency to say, oh, it'll go away. I'll just ignore it. Right. And then we get kind of confused and then we start to feel pain then it's almost like panic. You're, you you go into something called the fight or flight. Right. So you go into your sympathetic nervous system because you want to be, you know, get away from the pain. You want to go into survival mode. It just automatically happens that way. And when you stay in that survival mode long enough, you know, the pathways in your brain are actually changing. And when the doctors say to you, it's all in your head, you know, I was told that many, many times. Right. They're kind of right only because pain has a way of, again, changing the neural pathways in your brain. And it's almost like when you're on your computer and you're always, you know, using the same URL all the time and going to the same place, you know, whatever website, and then it gets to the point that the computer is recording all of this. So the next time you go in, you only have to like type in either the first letter or the first two letters, and it automatically takes you to that website because the computer knows what you're going to do. Your brain is working the same way. It's taking in all of this information that it's getting. It's not say determining if it's right or wrong or if it's real or imagined, but it is just recording it. So then it takes less of a trigger for that pain response you know, to, to come forth. Um, so it really is, and you have to address some of those pathways by changing your mindset and changing the patterns that are causing it. Wow. That the man, that that's powerful. Man, you should, you should get you. We should call her Dr. Cheryl, you know, the, doctor, Oh no, don't do that. Ninja doctor. <laughs> um, well, here's the deal. And, and I want to, I want, I want to, I know we didn't rehearse this, but you can flow. So let's just, let's just, let's just go on a rabbit trail here real quick. Y'all are, who are tuning in. This is impacting life 24 seven with your host CO King. Thank you to my podcast audience. And also thank you to our live audience who tunes in from all across the country and literally around the world. I am, I am joined by my friend, my sister, my comrade in arms, uh, Miss Cheryl. I love. She is the she is the author of the book that I have in my hand. See, I'm not just making it up. It, I actually <laughs> have the book, y'all, and it's called Forever Fit and Flexible. Let's talk about this because we've talked. I don't think we dove into it, and I, I want to give us a, a few moments. And our sponsors can pay for the show if it goes over. Opioids. What are your thoughts on them? Because. I have mine and I like to know how you, how you view them. Wow. What a loaded question. I know. Um, (laughs) I know. I don't have nothing more than that. I didn't rehearse the question. That's okay. I got it. So as you know, um, prior to getting my degree, my master's degree in physical therapy, and I did that for 20 years, I was also a respiratory therapist. So I was very much educated and ingrained in the Western medical model. And, you know, I think opioids really has a role. It really has its place. Uh, My husband had a total knee replacement in November. Needed some of the opioids for that to get through it. Um, And I I think that as long as the opioids are given to get through that acute phase and then either start weaning down and try other ways of pain management, you know, it could be with 
traditional physical therapy. It could be with acupuncture. Acupuncture is fantastic for pain control and for healing. Uh, so many different healing modalities out there like cranial sacral therapy. Oh my gosh. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Massage therapy, um, something called Reiki, the Feldenkrais that I'm trained in. So there are so many things out there. So keep an open mind. So what I would suggest is to make sure, uh, especially if you're in a situation where it's a chronic problem, and you've been in chronic pain, there are so many ways and so many different modalities that you can try to break that pain spasm cycle. Ah, that's powerful. You know, the reason why I asked that was because, you know, I was told as, as you were, I was told that, um, listen, you're going to be on, I had two failed back surgeries, major, Mm. my back surgeries cost almost a million dollars. I am Mm. a million dollar man, ladies (laughs) and gentlemen. And some of our younger audience will have a clue who that is. Right. <laughs> or was it $10 million man? Well, who was it? Was it the $10 million man or 1 million? Anyway, they said that I was going to be on this, this regime forever. Mm. Well, from 2013 to 2019, I can't hardly remember, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time in that, in that space. And it wasn't until I decided to get active and work counter again, you know, I had to work against what my natural instinct to do was lay around on the couch and pop a pill and feel sorry for myself. Um, and, and I agree with you that they have their place. So then how do we determine what, and I know this is not a show on opioids, Euro, this is, but I just need, I just want to put this out there because I know people struggle with this. How do we determine the difference between dependency and addiction boy that's something that's a little bit you know out of my area of expertise um yeah there is i think it's a fine line yeah and And, here's where here's here's why i asked that because i would i would um i would validate myself saying well, I'm not breaking into people's houses, taking, mm-hmm. stealing t- TVs to go sell, to go get more opioids. But here's what I found was when it went from you taking the doses, and I know I'm going to get off of this, y'all, because I am I know I'm, I'm diving way deep out here. When it went from me taking that one dose every six hours as prescribed to taking that one dose every five hours, and then every four hours and then every, moving the clock back, I went from depending on it to help me manage my pain to it blurring the lines of dependency and addiction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think in my own case, I feel like I was actually pretty lucky because I was still trying to work. Um, I couldn't work full time because it was just too grueling. You know, as a respiratory therapist, you're running all over the hospital. Uh, you're helping to lift patients. Uh, you're moving heavy equipment, and so I would have to limit. You know, work maybe half shifts or, or work half time. But what I would do, I would I had my medication, and I would take like just half. I wouldn't even take a whole tablet because there I was taking care of critically ill patients. Yeah. And I had to have all of my you know, <laughs> mental yeah. capacity because, you know, if if I didn't, things could go terribly wrong. And I was more concerned about them than I was about me. But it would take the edge off just enough right. that I could get through the day and still be um, and not be incapacitated. Last point. She made a great point. That's how I got off of mine. I started cutting them in half. Mm-hmm. And, and in addition to exercising, I started cutting them in half. Then I started cutting the halves in half. Mm-hmm. And my my pain management direct doctor was not directing me to do that, mm-hmm. but I realized that I knew the, and and the the window of of pain tolerance w- had shrunk so small that I needed to expand that thing back out. You know what I mean? That, that I needed to have feeling again, as opposed to oh my goodness, a, a feather just flew on me and I'm in pain. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one of the things, if we're gonna we're gonna get down into your book, we talk about. Um, uh, mindset. And, and that's one thing that you talk about in, in the first, uh, in chapter two of forever fit and flexible Mm -hmm. chapter two, you talk about mindset, help us understand why mindset is so important in this whole journey of feeling fit and flexible. 
Well, first of all, I do want to backtrack a little bit when you were talking about um, cutting your pills in half and then in quarters and stuff. You knew what to do. Right. You had that internal body wisdom, that body brain connection that told you what to do and you figured it out on your own. And that's what I say when, or what I mean, when I say that we are our own expert, we know what to do. It's just sometimes that the messages that we're getting from the medical profession or from society or other people, even friends, family who are concerned about us and they're looking out for us and want the best for us are maybe telling us information that really isn't the best for our health and vitality wow. so as far as well, hold, okay. on, hold on because now mm -hmm. you now see when you're going to do three shows this week cheryl this is so good because here's here's the deal you know my my pain management doctor and i'm just helping maybe this is helping one person out there mm -hmm. pain management doctor said i could come back anytime i wanted to she told me that she said i'm yours for for forever because i have a i have an irreplaceable i have an irreparable irreparable yeah nerve damage right and she said if you feel anything if you feel any whatever just come back to me because i'm her first patient ever to get off pain management uh, and uh the 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 pull psychologically with that is powerful trust yes, me it is. i've mm -hmm. thought about going to wilmington more times than not so <laughs> mm -hmm. so the mindset the mind is a powerful element so I think that gave us an on ramp to to for you to to address mindset when you're talking about your own wellness and and your own uh, feeling fit. You talk about you you start the book with mindset. Why do you do that? Mm -hmm. Because that is the most important thing. And again, I'm going to backtrack a little bit more. So sorry about that. But I'm when you said, what, <laughs> listen to this. What what those words that your doctor said when you feel something. Yeah come back and I'll give you medication so you can't feel. Ooh. We need to be able to feel our bodies are communicating with us constantly. Right. And they're sending, the body is sending us messages because we need to pay attention to that. Now with mindset, that's typically the, the labels that people put on you. For example, the label I was put on, you are a chronic pain patient, that's it, end of discussion. If you hear that label over and over and over again, the brain is taking it in, it's recording it. And even though it goes against your inherent belief system, if you hear it over and over again, eventually you're gonna accept it and say, that's right, I am a chronic pain patient. Because you, like I said, your brain is recording it. So it's changing the pathways in your brain and just doing what it's been told to do. Right. So mindset is to ignore those labels. And especially when we're maturing, when we're getting a little bit older, you know, society, uh, the media, uh, maybe the medical profession, even fitness instructors, well, you know what? you're getting older, you're supposed to have that little, you know, middle-aged bulge, you're supposed to start shrinking, you're supposed to have aches and pains, what do you expect? You're getting older, and we'll just help take care of you, and I actually saw something online one time, uh, it just made my blood boil, it was something about um, the, the medicine of aging, so there was like a whole new you know, it's not like geriatric care or whatever. It's the medicine of aging, meaning right. like aging is a disease. Well, no, it's not. Since the minute we were, you know, born and even before that, right. you know, how did we end up being a nine month old, you know, baby getting born? We were aging. We were maturing. Our cells are constantly changing. So getting older is not a disease. It's not something to fear. And it's to be able to embrace it and say, this could actually be the best part of my life. So what you tell yourself and what you hear from other people is very, very important. So that's why it's so important to give yourself positive messages and to ignore the people who you might even have to cut them out of your life who are giving you negative messages because that's going to bring you down. So it's just know that, you know, you can be healthy, fit, vibrant, and energetic the entire life for no matter how old you are. It's all in the mind. It starts there. Wow, that's powerful. And you, you guys, she's telling the truth because like I told her, I said, sometimes people go out and they're talking about, they're going to, you know, I'm going to reclaim my health and they go buy, you know, spandex and a headband and, and all that <laughs> and everything else. 
and then their mind they realize oh lord i wouldn't i wouldn't said i didn't even think this through i didn't think that what have i got myself into it's like marrying somebody you you know and you you wake up the next morning you're like oh my god what have i done <laughs> um so you, you also talk about the art of movement now this is in the book ladies and gentlemen this is uh forever fit and flexible feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond by my guest Cheryl I love you can find her at Cheryl I love.com man I've missed my sponsorship <laughs> oh my goodness I was supposed to do something at nine o'clock that's okay we just gonna keep on rolling um Cheryl I love.com she is my guest she's a two-time guest uh repeat guest on impacting life 24 7 and you talk about the art of movement so what is that well that ties in so beautifully for what you said about the spandex and the headband and just going out and just trying to you know yeah. all in one day you're just going to do it and start getting back into shape right mindless exercise definitely has its value you know if you want to go out and just go jogging or you know riding a bike or whatever but when you really include that mind body connection it's that mindfulness mindfulness of movement it's really taking movement to an art form rather than, oh God, I got 30 minutes, I've got to do these heinous exercises, let me hurry up and get it over with so it's, it's done. But if you take even simple exercises and you do them very slowly and you really concentrate on what you're doing, how the movement feels in your body, imagining you don't have to have a background in anatomy, but imagine like if you're doing bicep curls, the, the, you know the line of that muscle. And as you're doing the bicep curl, going really slowly and just imagining seeing it and feeling it contract and then slowly lengthening as you go back down, coordinating your breathing with that movement, feeling the length of the spine, you know, nice, good posture, feeling the, your core muscles working. You're going to get so much more out of 15 minutes of exercise like that every single day than you would an hour, an hour and a half at the gym three times a week. So it's really movement is an art form. Well, that's powerful. And, you know, I've never really thought of it that way. Uh, knowing that, that your background is in, in ballet, I can see that now how, how that, how that all comes full circle, because mm -hmm. when you look at the movement of a ballet dancer, it truly is art. Uh, and, and so when you, when you talk about movement is, you know, movement as an art form, the art of movement. That's powerful. I mean, that could be a book all by itself. Yes, it could. Um, so the, go ahead. Did you want to say something? No, I just said, yes, it could. But yeah. uh, just to let your listeners know that there are so many different um, movement modalities out there that really do embrace and embody that mind body connection, which really truly is artistic movement. That's really going to help your body. It's much better for your joints. There are things like Tai Chi, yoga, you know, of course, Pilates, Feldenkrais, um, there's a lot of different, uh, the Alexander technique, there's so many different things out there. So I would encourage people to really explore, keep an open mind and find something that really works for you. Because when you find something that you really enjoy, that you really connect with, then you're going to stick with it. Yeah, uh, Cheryl, just uh, because I know that you're a coach, do you do, you, do you do like a free consultation? I do. I do free okay. consultation. Uh, I want you guys to listen, if you're trying to, if you're trying to get the direction you got like some fog going on a lot a lot of cobwebs happening you like to like to meet with Cheryl and talk with Cheryl this is what we do on this show man I want I want I don't I don't bring this on so that everybody can say how cool I am and how great my show is I I bring people on the show because I really am interested in impacting one life if, if there's one person out there that we've talked in just our 30 minutes talking about opioids and in, in for 10 minutes and that helps somebody we've done our job. If there's another person out here that's trying to figure out, man, I heard about the art of movement and I, I need to understand about that, man, I've got a guest. On, we don't bring folks out here looking for something to do or looking for a platform. Cheryl is a very busy lady, high in demand, and she's got her own book and I got a copy of it and you ain't getting it unless you contact her at Cheryl. I love Dot com. Thank you, Greg, for putting her stuff out there. Continue to blast that out there. I want everybody to go to SherylLove.com. Uh, that's I-L-O-V without an E. So you talk about um, posture, and I don't know if you guys have noticed in my live audience, you've noticed that maybe I've been trying to, 
I'm, 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 I'm getting a little tall. Every time I get on the show with Cheryl, I feel so terrible. Like she's like the, she's like that teacher that's watching you. Like, oh, what are you doing over there, boy? So I said, man, I'm gonna try see how much I can do this for the whole show. Uh, I have changed my posture and I'm sitting up straight. Uh, I, I asked my folks to buy me about a six or seven hundred dollar chair, and they laughed at me. So I'm. <laughs> I'm not in a six or seven dollar chair. And so I have a tendency to be like three inches shorter. And so, but I'm, I can just tell you this, that even just sitting up straight um, does something to me more than just, I can't even explain it. I even feel different. I know how it is when I walk in a building and I'm the keynote speaker. I always walk in like, I like, like I'm the keynote speaker, right? I walk in different. I don't walk in all slumped over. I feel I, you feel different about yourself when when your posture is different. So you talk about this in chapter seven uh, or chapter six. You talk about posture. Help my audience understand why posture is important. Oh, my goodness. It's so important for so many reasons. So let's start with the basics. It's really important for your health. And people don't think about that. They know, you know, they've been told, you know, don't slouch. So they know that. But it's really important to your health. Think about it. If you are in this rounded shoulder, forward flex position, forward head, what are you doing? You're actually limiting the pulmonary, the lung capacity. So you can't breathe as well. You're closing off some of the smaller airways. I won't get technical, the alveoli. But so you're not able to breathe as well. You're not be able to get as much oxygen to the muscles and to get the CO2 out. So your, your pulmonary system is already impacted. What does that do? That impacts your cardiac system as well because the heart can't function as well. Then not only that, the digestion system can't work as well. And not only that, now let's get to the really important part. It looks bad. So if you know the, the health issues don't, don't make you want to sit up taller or stand taller, when you're in an upright position, I call it neutral posture. I don't like to say there's you know good posture or bad posture because people get so hung up on that. And there's a lot of hangups about posture for people who've been told they had bad posture all their life. And yeah. I have been told that too, even by my ballet teachers, how terrible my posture was. It just makes you feel like a horrible person. Right. But when you do have neutral posture and your spine is in that neutral position, not only is it good for your health, but you're taller, you're slimmer, it gives you a smaller waistline and it automatically starts engaging your deep core muscles, the ones that are so important for the health of your spine and your pelvis to keep the stability. So that's, those are two great reasons. And the third one, and there's a lot more than that, but the third one is exactly what you said. When you're walking in to give a keynote speech, you don't just kind of go, oh, well, I'm going to come and talk to you people. You walk in there like you own the room. Yes. And when you walk into a room and you've got good posture, it's amazing how people take notice of you. Right. And if you don't believe me, try it. Try going either to a grocery store or a crowded place. Well, if you can find a crowded place these days <laughs> and, you know, just stand tall and just look around making eye contact with everybody and see the kind of response you get. And then start to shrink and see what happens. You could even do it at a family dinner. It's really funny. A friend of mine taught me this that uh, he was one of my Feldenkrais trainers and he was sitting and like nobody was paying attention to him and his big family dinner and all of a sudden he realized he was sitting like this and he started to come back up and all of a sudden everybody started engaging with him and paying attention and he was like that's really weird and he went back down so it's just a really fun thing to do. Wow. You know, I, 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 she talks about uh, owning the room. I, I, this is just a side note. I've always wanted to go to like a construction site and go get me a, a $5 hard hat and a clipboard and walk in there and act like I'm like some sort of foreman and see if anyone questions me. <laughs> Anybody ever thought about doing that? Anyway, I don't know how that, but I'm, I'm thinking about owning the room. You know what I'm saying? So she talks about core strength. My guest, Cheryl Isla, for those of you tuning in, welcome to Impact Life 24-7 with your host, CL King. I have on my Friday, this is y'all Thursday, but this is my Friday, uh, my guest, my friend and my sister, comrade in arms, fellow mm -hmm. podcaster, uh, fit and flexible, uh, fit and flexible, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond forever fit and flexible. That is my guest, Cheryl. I love and my camera's backwards. So I got to ma maneuver properly. <laughs> I want you guys to go to Cheryl. I love.com and get this book because she's giving out nuggets of truth 
that truly are revolutionary. And I mean, just, just what you're hearing now, but if you want to go a step further, I love for you to connect with her. She gives free consultations. She's an expert in her field, ladies and gentlemen. She didn't just find something else to write another book to write about fitness. She's a respiratory therapist and physical therapy too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So she's, she's an expert in her field and uh, that's the only people that we bring on the show, ladies and gentlemen, the highest caliber folks that in their field. So flexibility is another thing. Now look at that. Look at her on the book, point over your shoulder there, Cheryl, let so everybody knows that that's you, right? Which way am I pointing that way? My camera's backwards. There, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So, so flexibility. Now this is a struggle for a brother like me, because uh, I guess I got to get a few more pounds off. Um, but, but talk about flexibility and how do you achieve, how do you begin to achieve it? Okay, the first thing is no judgment. Okay, no judgment. No judgment. Um, and the, the second thing is, if you notice, we started with posture. Yes. And posture just kind of segued beautifully into core strength. Right. And so once you've got your posture figured out, and then working on the core strength, and then it goes into flexibility, because believe it or not, you have already started working on your flexibility just by addressing your posture and your core strength. And a lot of the mistake that people make, um, you know, when you, you're, you're feeling tight and you try and stretch those muscles, and have you ever done that? And then realize after you stretched, you feel tighter than you did before you stretched. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a rebound effect. And it's not because you're doing something wrong. It's because there's actually a physiological reason for that. Okay. Muscles are inherently flexible, have a really good blood supply, very rich. But as they go, as they start to transition toward um, the, the connection onto the bones and the joints, the tissues change into tendons and ligaments, which tendons don't have as much of a blood supply and then the ligaments and those those um, that soft tissue is really rich in um, nerve tissue. Mm -hmm. So if you are and their jo their job is actually to protect the joint. Okay, so if you start stretching, because the soft tissue is tight and you start stretching the muscle, it's gonna pull on that soft tissue that's already tight and it's gonna send messages to the brain from those uh, nerve endings saying, danger, 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 you're gonna rip the joint, let's tighten up. And so it sends the signals back down for the tissues to tighten up anymore to protect the joint. So with flexibility, instead, instead of addressing stretching the muscles, what you really wanna do is just to gently mobilize the joints of the body. I'll use the hip joint as an example. You know, it's a beautiful joint. I love the hip joint. But here's the, it's a ball and a socket. And when it has the capacity to roll, slide and glide in a circumduction type of movement. Right. Well, think about it in our modern life, we only use that joint, that beautiful joint as a hinge joint, front and back, front and back, front and back, as we're walking, sitting, walking, sitting, and we don't have the capacity, it, we just don't function in a way that we're really stirring that joint around, which is something that ballet dancers do because we dance in that turned out position, probably to the extreme. But if you can start just gently mobilizing your own hip joint by doing gentle circles, it's going to start to soften and loosen the soft tissue, giving messages to the nerve endings supporting that, that joint and that tissue that it's okay to relax. Ah. It's okay. And then it sends the signal back up and the signal comes back down and the soft tissue can start to relax. And that's how you start to really improve your flexibility. Man, I was, man, I've never, I don't know if any of y'all out there have ever heard flexibility described like that, but that was powerful. Well, let me ask you this for a layman like CL King, because as you guys know, I have no other skills besides talking. <laughs> how, um, how much time should we invest in this? You know, like somebody says, man, I want to increase my flexibility and I want to, I want to focus on that. And, you know, people do stretches and such. How, how much time is, a, is enough time and, you know, so we don't overdo it? Well, what I would recommend is to do a little bit every single day. And the nice thing is you can actually work on your flexibility when you're cleaning the kitchen. 
<laughs> okay. So you slow things down a little bit. And instead of kind of like bending down to empty the dishwasher, you can actually start moving from your hips, keeping your back straight. Not only is that mobilizing your hip joints, it's mobilizing the knee and the ankle, making sure that your knee is over your foot. Right. And it's also because your back is straight, you're engaging your uh, core muscles. Right. Working on your posture, your balance at the same time. I call it the more bang for your buck. Right. I mean, why am I going to do some exercises just to work one part of my body when I can have the whole thing at the same time? So right. to take functional movement and use that to actually work on the flexibility, the balance and, you know, core strength, everything. The one thing, one thing. Okay. So this is our little secret. Okay. For just between the two of us yes. and all of the listeners mm -hmm. is one of the best things you can do for your flexibility and your balance is to get down on the floor every single day, at least once a day, <laughs> your face, <laughs> your expression. Yeah. Just get down on the that's floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and you've got a new puppy. I mean, right, that's, down what, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Here comes Samson. Yep. Yep. Samson would love it. So that's, that's all you need to do. I was so cute. I had one client who said to me one time, well, what do I do when I get there? And it's like, well, you can do whatever you want. You can crawl around the floor. If you want, you can just lie on your back, find a way to make yourself comfortable lying on your back. You can just do little sways. Like I call them window or windshield wiper movements with your knees and your hips. It's just get down on the floor. Cause you got to get back up. Uh -huh. And that's the one thing that really ages us more than anything is the fear of the floor. So make the floor your friend. Ooh, yeah. I've been getting down on the floor with Samson because he's so cute. Oh, Greg says so it's cute. not just Greg says it's not just the two of us, it's the three of us. Well, yeah, of course, Greg, you're always <laughs> coming, brother. If it's if you see me, you see Greg. Um, but here's what I know: none of my kids are flexible because they never empty the dishwasher. So there's that. So <laughs> oops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so so anyway, I, we that might we might could work on that. I'm sorry I skipped over core strength because I know that's a very very important element, and you you were so masterful in, in incorporating that in our discussion. And then we talk about um, okay, let be, Lord have mercy, time is just flying, Cheryl. Let's talk about you. You talk about functional strength. Mm -hmm. Functional strength is basically what I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, your functional activities, the things that you have to do around you know the house. You got to do it. So use the, that time to use it for strengthening, stretching, balance, that type of thing. That's for example, yeah, think about it. Um, you know, a lot of people, their shoulders, they lose flexibility in their shoulders. If you're reaching for, you know, something in a closet, in a cupboard, reaching up high, that gives you an opportunity to really just reach as high as you can, mobilize your shoulder a little bit, stretch feel your core muscles supporting you as you stretch, just yeah. things like that. Again, getting in and out of the car is a wonderful way to start working those hip joints and getting some mobility in your hip joints. So yeah. just every single thing that you do during the day, make it more interesting. I tell people put on music um, and dance in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, the kitchen is a lovely place. I love to practice my martial arts in the kitchen. Uh, because as I'm cleaning the countertops, I'm actually practicing some of my ninja moves. And it's like, you know, two birds, one stone. Got it done. Boom. Scotty Oakley, who's, as you guys know, was on our show uh, in our season last, our last season. He says to Greg, I think I'm losing my flexibility, Greg Smith. Is there any hope for me? Scotty, there's got to be hope for us, brother. Here's how you can gain some flexibility. Let me help. <laughs> so here, here's, here's a bowl. Uh, here's a fork. Okay, so you could just take it and really stretch it way up. Move your head back so you can get a good, nice, long stretch. <laughs> can I say one more thing about flexibility? Because flexibility is one of my favorite topics. Go ahead, Cheryl. It's not necessarily flexibility of body. It's flexibility of mind. Ah. Once you have the flexibility in your thinking, that actually translates into your body. And I have a perfect example of it because there was a professional dancer who was more of a modern dancer than ballet. And this was a few years ago, I won't say how many. Um, and we're in class together and he was trying to, you know, stretch his hamstring and I was horrified how tight he was. It's like, my goodness, I can't believe it for a dancer. That's crazy. And I ended up in a training program with him years later, um, a four-year training program for Feldenkrais, which is another thing I talk about. 
And I got to know him even better. And it was like, aha, now I know why you're so rigid in your body because you are so rigid in your thinking. And it was just mm. eye opening and a powerful lesson for me. And I think about that a lot. If I start to feel tight, it's like, what am I thinking? Right, man, that's pow man, that's so powerful. Scott says, I'm laying on the couch listening. <laughs> Got this is not going to work, my brother. We've got to get moving, brother. And that that oh. brings, that brings us to actually the next uh, the next area that we focus on in the book, chapter eleven. I want you guys listen, Scott. Tell your friends, and, and Scott is a great man, great great uh, guy who was on our show. Tell your friends to go to CherylILove.com and get this book, Forever Fit and Flexible, feeling fabulous feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. And I can just tell you, she talks about this next part because you just dealt with it, Scott, since you're on the couch. Um, <laughs> get moving and keep moving. Cheryl, help us. Who was it that said a body in motion tends to stay in motion? Ah. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. Oh. Our friend Isaac Newton knew what he was Isaac talking knew about. Knew what he was talking about, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's called I'm physics. I don't think he said a body. I think it was an object, but still, same thing. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that is so true. Please, Cheryl. That that was that was so revelatory. She brought in science, ladies and gentlemen, that that all of us have went through, no matter what our age is. If you haven't heard of Isaac Newton, okay, <laughs> now, but we're gonna we're gonna put a twist on it, uh, and give him credit, but we're gonna twist it because she said, mm. "Say it again, Cheryl." A body in motion tends to stay in motion. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. I've got a little tip for Scott, no. just so he knows. Okay, so Scott, you don't need to hop off, off the couch, start doing jumping jacks, run around the place. No, you don't have to. All you got to do is start. So you might want to try sitting up uh -huh. and then maybe standing up, maybe walking around the room, maybe not, doesn't matter. And then get back down on the couch. You've done something. And it adds up. People think that they have to work out for an hour or an hour and a half to get any benefit. That's not true. It's like putting money in a bank. I've got a piggy bank. You know, I'm going to put all the spare change in there. And it's just like, oh, there's just a couple of dimes, a few quarters. But in about a month, I got some real money in there. Yeah. And it's the same thing with exercise and movement. Keep moving little bits and it has a cumulative effect. Wow, that's powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're tuning in to Impact in Life 24-7 with your host, C.L. King. I have on my show the feminine ninja, the actual ninja, Cheryl I Love, and she is the author of Forever Fit and Flexible, Feeling Fabulous at 50 and Beyond. And if you don't have your copy yet, uh, if you don't have your copy yet, you need to get a copy of this book, okay? I'm asking you to go to CherylILove.com. Her, her website is in the comments. But I'm asking you to do that because because here's the deal. We are all of us who are in this in the listenership of this show, which, as you guys know, is broad. <laughs> we are all going. We're all aging. I don't care what you she said it from the time of conception. You began aging and it's just how you age. So I'm, I'm going to let you guys know at the end of the show, I'm going to reveal, do the big reveal. <laughs> but I want y'all to, to guess how old Cheryl is. OK, I want y'all to guess. Everybody watching that you pass by should have been saying this more often. I'm sorry. Greg had his guess, but I want you guys to guess how old Cheryl is. Greg said 32. Uh, I want you guys to guess how old Cheryl is because she is the author of the book that I have in my hand, Forever Fit and Flexible. Uh, Greg says 32 again. So, <laughs> I love him. Feeling fabulous uh, at 50 and beyond. Greg, you know, Greg is the better half of, of the CL King group. And he's uh, that's why I get so many gigs because of him. Uh, so, Cheryl, de we've dealt with so much. And you know what? Really, I'm, I'm going to whenever I have a panel on on health and nutrition, I was really thinking about doing a health summit and have, you know, a, a paid health summit with professionals like yourself, because because people have there are some people that have used COVID and benefit mm -hmm. from it. And there's others that have allowed the sedentary slowed down pace mm -hmm. to, you know, depression and all this bad eating habits. Mm -hmm. And you talk about this in chapter 12 on page 169, you talk about nutrition. And whenever anybody hears the word nutrition, they run. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to give you, uh, again, I'm going to extend the show tonight, Greg. So just forgive me. Okay. Um, 
nutrition, help us understand what your take on nutrition is, what you write about in the book. And, you know, when somebody sees that chapter in this book, why they don't need to stay away from that chapter. Yeah, you don't have to run because I'm not um, a nutritionist and nutrition is definitely not my area of expertise. Um, what I know about nutrition is what I had to teach myself or learn for myself through my own trial and error and making huge mistakes that it's like, I better change something real quick here because I was going down a, a bad path. So it's about um, listening to your body. It's about making good choices, but not depriving yourself because you can have your kale and your chocolate too. It's okay. <laughs> Life it. is short. Oh, I even did a blog post. I think I even did a podcast on that. <laughs> I but, love it. but it's true. I mean, you don't want to deprive yourself of everything. And if you slip up and you have, you know, if you have a piece of pie, the pie is not going to kill you. Right. Don't eat the whole pie. I wouldn't recommend that. Right. But if you do, you know, have some grace with yourself it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Just start again the next day. Make small changes. Don't try and change your diet all at one time because that's disastrous. Nobody's going to stick with that. That's just, but make small, small changes. And just remember, you know, we're, we're works in progress. Yeah. We're works in progress. So be kind to yourself. Just pay attention to yourself and pay attention to how you feel um, with some of the foods that you eat. It's you know, if, if you're feeling sluggish or feeling, you know, icky, probably not the best thing for you. So it goes back to, you know, mindset and awareness, paying attention to yourself. That, 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 that's so good, Cheryl. Um, and we talk about, I look at that at the end, uh, you got to, you, you kind of do a program review for mm. everybody at the end of your book and you, and you give them, uh, you give them kind of like a roadmap to, to get moving, to get to, to the fundamental principles, um, core strength, flexibility, balance, and you and you go into this uh, to give somebody, OK, listen, man, if you if you just picked up this book today and, and you just followed it, you said something so great. Eric Thomas, who, as you know, is one of my favorite speakers. He's the number one speaker in the world. Mm -hmm. You see him on the Leadership Institute. I post him all the time. He says small steps, great distances. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and I and I, I agree with that. I, I've, I have had more restart Monday. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. I like, in other words, I, instead of it, when I sink on Monday, but you know, I must, I can sink, <laughs> you know, you're my friend. Um, I just, I needed another sunrise. And I just, I said, man, I'm gonna start over today. You know, I'm, I'm and I think somebody out there may be feeling that way. Mm -hmm. that, you know, <clears throat> I, I'm not a ninja and, I, and you know, Cheryl is such, so humble. She, you would, you could see her out in town and never know that the woman is, is a, is, is a force of nature. Uh, mm -hmm. You could look at her back wall and tell that she, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Cheryl, but Cheryl is, is, is someone that understands grace and she teaches grace and she teaches you to have grace on yourself. Uh, oftentimes people get into into a downward spiral because because they they they're too hard on themselves and they're trying to make this radical change and it's not working. Listen, let, let me tell you something. Sometimes the things that you should do will contrast what what you think you should do. Here's what I mean. <clears throat> when a plane is in a stall, as you guys know, I'm an aviation expert. I am. I, that is another thing I can do. When a plane is in a stall, that means it's lost its lift to be able to stay afloat. And oftentimes uh, it will start to sink. And the natural tendencies are to pull back on the yoke because you want to try to go up. But the reality is, is that you should push down. That totally is in contrast to what you think, you know, I mean, what, what I'm like, oh, I need to pull up. No, push down. That's the only way you'll gain speed and regain altitude. Oftentimes we think, man, well, like she said, you know, don't, don't think that you got to go to the gym 19 hours a week and, and you got to, you know, throw everything out of your refrigerator tomorrow and all these kind of things. Sometimes the things that you think you should do are not, are not necessarily the case. Oftentimes it's the opposite. And she gave us just a, what she did. She pushed our nose down on our plane, just a nudge to get us a, a little more speed guys and, and, and that little speed can give you 
a little more lift and that lift can keep you afloat and aloft uh, and keep you alive. You know, Scotty, we made a joke tonight about Scotty being on the couch, but there's a lot of people on the couch, not physically, but metaphorically, you know, Cheryl, and, and I want them to get a hold of your book. I want them to, I want them to find Cheryl. I love, I, I found her, Greg and founder. Greg's got, I, I think, I don't know if Greg has your book, but I know you have his mm-hmm. um, and, and Greg's, you're not coming. Craig's coming over here tomorrow and he's not going to touch this book. Okay. Greg, don't even think about asking me. Can you even look at it? <laughs> Um, but I want everyone to go out there. Greg, put the website out there for us again. Cheryl, I love.com. And I want you to go to her, her website. You can find that Cheryl. I love is a much sought after speaker, life coach, podcast host, uh, professional um, therapist in, in, in terms of physical therapy and respiratory therapy. And, and beyond that, she is a real person. You know, I, I, you know, sometimes you have people on that you deal with that are, they're so up in the clouds, they're no good. She's a real person. So what I'm going to do for you, Cheryl, is before I tell, before I give you my platform back, I'm going to tell everybody how old she is. No, I'm going to let Cheryl tell you, because I, <laughs> my sister, I know. But Cheryl, tell, tell America how old Cheryl I Love is. I can't believe I'm doing this, but, you know, I'm actually kind of proud of it. Um, I'm 64. 64. Did, did, did y'all hear that? That not 46 like King. I look older than Cheryl. Oh. <laughs> Greg, do I look older than Cheryl, brother? <laughs> and you know, I love I love having people on that that are that are like family. Um, and, and this has been this look, the time has flown. We're four minutes over, wow. and I'm I'm it, this has really been so inspirational on so many fronts. And um, Greg says, no way. I told you, Greg, I told you. Way. Yeah. And, and that's because of the principles, ladies and gentlemen, the principles that are tucked in this book, forever fit and flexible, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. She became a, she started ninja class at 47, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. She, I don't know what it's called, but you know, she became a ninja or got in, in, in enrolled and started going to classes at, at a 47 year old, that's a year older than me. I couldn't imagine trying to become a ninja at my age and my size. And <laughs> if, if I could make just one last point is if I could have looked into the future when I was in my thirties yeah. and s- could see where I w- would be at this point in my life, I wouldn't have believed it. I don't know if I would have laughed or cried, but if somebody would have told me where I'd be, I would have de- definitely said, you're crazy. So it's been a struggle. It's been a lot of work, and but it can be done. And it can be done in a way that, you know, you give yourself grace and give yourself space and give yourself positive messages. And I believe everybody could be fit, healthy, vibrant, and energetic at every stage of life. Well, and that's you know, my wish for you, everybody out there. Well, that's not that's not getting you off the hook, Cheryl, because even though I hear the music playing in the background, uh, you get uh, about let's take 45 seconds. I want you to speak to America, OK, because people are going through all different types of things, all different. We've been through so much. Well, here we are back in March. I mean, here we are back in February now, mm-hmm. 2021. And I want everybody to hear from Cheryl. I love a message of inspiration and a message of hope. You gave us a little mini version there, but I wasn't letting you off the hook. I want you to talk to my my audience and our listeners and give them a message of inspiration and hope uh, as we close out the show. Well, boy, that's a big order. But, um, you know, we've had a terrible year. We've gone through an awful lot as a, as a nation, as a community, you know, everyone is suffering and everybody feels a little bit disconnected. And I think the best thing we can do for our physical and mental emotional health right now is to try and reconnect with people. Uh, Try and reach out, especially if you are struggling. And one of the best things you can do is just start moving. It's amazing what movement does, even just walking down the street, walking through your neighborhood for your mental, physical, emotional well-being. And guess what? You'll be able to see some of your neighbors. You'll be able to see people in the car cars, traffic, but just get out there and connect with people because I know that it's been rough, but I think that when we come through and get to the other side, life is going to be so much sweeter and look so much better than it did ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the kindest and most gracious people you'll ever meet, Cheryl Ilove, the book, 
<laughs> fit and flexible. I finally got the camera angle right. <laughs> uh, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. Go to Cheryl I Love. Dot com. And also you can check her out on her podcast, The Feminine Ninja, The Feminine Ninja Project, right? Mm-hmm. Ninjaproject.com. I want you guys to go there as well. But I want you to get this book in your hands. I want you to reach out to Cheryl on social media. She gives free consultations. I want you to bless her. I want you to just flood her, her messages and her website and just really connect with her because, listen, you know, you would have to, had to have paid thousands of dollars <laughs> go to a conference. Wouldn't they have, Cheryl? Probably. They would, they would have paid thousands of dollars to hear even some of the even some of the peripheral stuff that Cheryl is offering to us uh, tonight. Now, the book is not free, okay? <laughs> but but, but I, I guarantee you that if you get this book in your hand and read it like I have, then you can start realizing that, man, I, I'm not too old to get started. Yesterday was yesterday. Isn't that right, Cheryl? Absolutely. Yesterday was yesterday. And we, we move on from yesterday. We, a new sunrise means a new set of opportunities. So Cheryl, I love go to Cheryl, I love.com. And uh, we will have her back on uh, just, she's a, re- she's going to be a regular on this show. I might even make her a co-host. She's so good. Uh, but we, th- we just talked We you know, we talked about so many dynamics tonight. And so Cheryl, I love.com Cheryl, listen, thank you. I know you got to get going. But thank you so much for being with us again in the studios. And we look forward to having you back very, very soon. Thank you so much. It has been an honor. It always is. I love talking to you and uh, love talking to the audience as well. All right. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Take care. Okay. You too. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's my Friday. (laughs) Greg says, I'll be getting my book. Not my book. You'll be getting your own. Let me take care of our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, because I did not get to do it at the nine o'clock hour. Our gold sponsors, I want everybody to become a sponsor. We got three layers of sponsorship, but our gold sponsors, these are the people that get advertisements on our show. Greg Smith, he's the author of 100 Simple Ways How to Manage a Property and Evidence Room. Get your copy today by reaching out to Greg Smith on Facebook or at email at smith1963, that's smithg1963 at yahoo.com. Michelle Perry. She's another gold sponsor. Very, very thankful for Michelle Perry. She is, she has been on my show uh, several times or one one time, and I'm going to have her back, but she's also had me on her show several times. And uh, she's a phenomenal lady. She's a a podcast host and she's the founder of the Successful Diligence LLC Corporation. And she's also the host of the Successful Diligence Podcast. Uh, She's a best-selling author of the pebble in my shoe. You got to get a copy of her book and you can connect with Michelle at, uh, and get a copy of her book at the successful diligence podcast.com. Also Adrian Barker, super lady, so kind. I was on her show. Uh, and she's a sponsor of our show because she felt like what we were trying to do was important. And, and was making a difference. We're, our goal is to impact one life one day at a time, ladies and gentlemen. She's the host of the Adrian Barker Speaks podcast. So go look her up. Uh, she's a life coach and CEO of Professional Global Etiquette. And I want you to connect with her at professionalglobaletiquette.com. See, here's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, with this whole sponsorship thing, especially our gold sponsors and our platinum sponsors, is we're connecting you and we're connecting them to you. And I want you to go to these people and, and to our sponsors and tell them that you heard about them on our show. Get a copy of Greg's book. Greg's got so many nuggets in his book, uh, not just about evidence uh, and property and evidence, but so much more about life, man. Uh, and so Greg will be with me tomorrow. Can't wait to see him. And Michelle Perry, again, she is out there in Texas. She's doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job with the Successful Diligence podcast. It's been, at, I think that she's got like 20,000 downloads on her podcast and uh, best-selling author. And again, Adrian Barker, who's doing phenomenal things with, the, with Global Etiquette. So that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's worthwhile going over if it's something like that. So I'm very, very blessed to have Cheryl I Love as a friend She's on our Leadership Institute. She contributes as a leader on our Leadership Institute. We have her on. I think Michelle is going to be contributing uh, this coming Monday. 
So it's a, it's a full circle. You know, we, we don't just have people on who are making such great influence and then say, okay, you're, you're done with, we're done with you. We don't want, man, we, we connect, we stay connected. We collaborate. We build, we build bridges, man. And Cheryl, you know, is somebody who just taught uh, our leadership Institute, our leadership Institute has leaders from all across the country and around the world in that Institute. And she taught them uh, three leadership insights just this past Monday, phenomenal, phenomenal job or two Mondays ago. And uh, that's what this is really about, ladies and gentlemen, the whole movement of Impact Life 24 seven. So would you like to be a sponsor? That's what I'm asking. You guys have been hearing me talk about this now for several weeks in a row. Okay, y'all acting like y'all ain't listening to me. I'm talking about there's three levels of sponsorship. There's a silver, gold, and platinum. The silver level sponsorship is a dollar a month. <laughs> the gold sponsorship where you heard our us advertise for these organizations is $5 a month. And then the platinum sponsorship is $15 a month. And what each level does uh, is something unique. The $15 level helps us get our gear training out to at-risk youth throughout the country. Also helps us with bullying prevention in schools. Okay, that's, and for us to be able to give it at a no or low cost uh, expenditure to the school districts. I love to be able to give away my gear training to every student in America. Our goal is to reach a thousand students. You can help us. Impacting life 24 seven. We're doing one life at a time until we get to a million. Of, of, of students. And how do you become a sponsor? It's very, very simple. Go to clkingspeaker.com. Scroll down a little bit on the, on the first page and you'll see your opportunity to sponsor. And we, we're getting more and more sponsors. We've got, uh, like I said, we have silver sponsors. Those are the people that help us keep our show on the air. Our show incurs a ton of, of expenditures. Okay, everything you see in here, it does not happen for free. Even to uh, even to host a podcast or to or to have a, a podcast hosted on a on a framework cost. Our calendar system cost. Uh, our website cost. And it just it that's okay because God has been good to us. Uh, the 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 growth has definitely been there. We looked at some analytics uh, over the past month or so, and we saw you know. 35, 40,000 folks get reached on all of our major platforms, but all those platforms to maintain them, the team that we're bringing on, it, it's, it, you see what I'm saying? And so, I mean, it's not your fault. You didn't ask us to create this, but I thought about it, man. I said, man, if that one person had reached out to me, what, what life would I have right now? It was, it was one, one life that value that, that was valuable to them. So clkingspeaker.com. That's it for me. Uh, this is my Friday. I will see you guys, of course, back here Monday night at 8.30, Tuesday night at 8.30, and Thursday night at 8.30. You ask what else do you, what else cost? The stuff, the lights, the camera, the soundboard. We don't just run, we're not just running stuff off of our phone. Here's my phone right here, y'all. We don't just run stuff off of our phone. We 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 utilize uh, high quality items to produce this show. Why? Because we want high quality guests to come on here. Why? Because you guys are high quality listeners. So for those listening on the podcast, you can go to clkingspeaker.com or those watching live, clkingspeaker.com. Scroll down and become a subscriber. You can also go to a couple tabs over that says our international podcast and you can subscribe to our podcast. Very, very simple and be be connected with what this movement is um and i really do appreciate you guys i appreciate greg and our team i appreciate danny i appreciate mike i appreciate katrina and uh you know greg eats at the table first greg's been with me since day one and uh you know he could be at home i mean he's got his grandbaby there you guys see him in the chats he could be at home taking care of his family but instead he's here with me he's not even on the screen He's an hour and some change up the road. But every Monday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, unless he's out of town, he's helping me with this show. That, that's what best friends do. So connect today. 
be a part of what we got going on. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to mass produce our IL247 shirts because we're going to, for all of our sponsors and people who connect, you guys are going to be IL247, you know? You, you guys are going to be our 247ers. <laughs> we're going to have an army of 247ers. And people are going to be like, what does the IL247 stand for? Impact in life, 24-7. That's right. And I, my life has been impacted. My life has been impacted. Cheryl, I love. Forever fit and flexible, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. And if you can just get this book and get 10% of the nuggets out of it, it's worth the buy. CherylILove.com. All right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you to our team. Thank you, everybody. We will talk to you again on Monday on Impacting Life 24-7. Guess with who? Your host, C.L. King. Have a great weekend, everybody.